So we, what we wanted to do is we wanted to do something a little bit more uh, informal, a little bit more casual, uh, because, you know, we can preach about prayer all day long, but sometimes I think it's good for us to be challenged to hear how other people have, have grown and learned and experienced, um, especially this thing on prayer. When we talk about prayer in church, I'll just be honest, there's a lot of people, and I've been one of them, and I am from time to time when you hear preachers. You, you hear prayer and automatically you go to, oh man, I'm horrible at that, right? And so what we want to do today is not make people feel guilty for not praying enough, but rather we, we want to be able to challenge us and encourage us to engage in this life-giving discipline of prayer. So we've, uh, we've invi- invited a handful of people here who are part of Crossroads Church that, that many of you know well, and uh, to people who we admire and look up to in, in the way that they have committed themselves to uh, a faithful prayer life. And I think we, we all have something that we can learn together today. I, I want to open us with one verse of scripture. If, if you're doing the, the, the prayer thing through the month, um, I, th- I believe it was Friday. Yeah, Friday. Uh, we read Psalm 91. And it says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High uh, will rest in the shadow of of the Almighty. And in this season of life in the world right now, like we all just want some rest, right? Some soul rest, some heart rest, some mental and emotional rest. And yet God says where it's found. Um, I see that picture of, of a house and it's storming outside and we're playing in the yard and we're wondering why we're wet. And we're like, man, I just wish I could be inside where it's calm and find rest. And, um, the thing is, you don't just go there when it's storming. You hang out there and you stay there. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. And I believe one of the, the conduits that we have of, of learning what it means and actually walking what it means to dwell in the shelter of the Most High is when we find ourselves in prayer. He invites us into that place of shelter. Um, and when we live there, there's rest there in the storms. And, uh, and so anyway, I, I just, when I look at uh, Greg and Sandy and Nate, I see people who have put that into practice. And I hope that, that uh, just in conversation and de- discussion, questions, dialogue today, uh, that your faith uh, will be encouraged and, and you'll be challenged to grow in that area of prayer. But before we jump in too far, I know that everybody doesn't really maybe know everybody that's on the panel. So we want to make sure you all know who is talking to us today. So on the far end over there is Greg Swanson. And uh, Greg has been a part of our lives for a very long time. He's led trips that Sean's went on, men's uh, outreach trips. He, um, I have so many memories of Greg because he, his daughter Michelle and I grew up together, very good friends. So um, but, uh, you know, Greg, has, he, he taught us how to, sh- uh, really was instrumental in teaching us how to share our faith in a really, um, just an, an easy way. He used to take us downtown to hand out tracts and, and just talk to people, engage in conversations about Jesus. Um, but uh, I remember growing up, you know, with Michelle having sleepovers, and I can remember very early in the morning, Greg being out at his table in his living room or dining room praying and reading his Bible. And uh, so we just, we just really respect Greg for a life of prayer. And Greg has seen a lot of people that he has come in contact with. He's been able to have conversations because he does dwell in the, in the, in the 
What's the verse? Dwell in the shelter. Of, of, of he does time. spend that time with Jesus so that when he is out in the world, he can hear the Holy Spirit speaking, and he's just been able to speak into people's lives. So we've always really respected Greg for that. Um, uh, you all know uh, Sandy Strop. She, her husband Grady is our missions pastor, and we've also known Gra uh, Grady and Sandy for a really long time. But, um, you know, Sandy just, um, if you've ever spent much time with her as she's in conversations, mainly with women but with couples, me and Sandy just, she hears from the Lord, and she's able to discern in different situations just the truth that God wants to speak to people. And again, that stems from this quiet place. She spends time with Jesus on the days that she's at home so that when she goes out, she's ready and equipped to be able to hear from God. So I just want you guys to know, these people that you're listening to here today, they, they know what they're doing. And then Nate, uh, Nate Burnett, who is our new neighbor, and we couldn't be more <laughs> thrilled about it. Uh, but uh, Nate, we've just uh, been so impressed these last several years that we have gotten to know Nate and Nate's commitment to prayer. Many of you may know this or not know this, but uh, in their last home, Nate had a prayer room built in his garage because that time with the Lord was so important. He had little kids running around and w sleeping, and it was important to him to still be able to have that time with the Lord, even though, you know, he didn't want to wake up his family members. And, and we just have always uh, admired Nate. We feel like, Nate, you're wise beyond your years and your commitment, your willingness to say, what can I do in my house to provide this space that I can spend time with the Lord. So uh, that's who you're listening to today. So I know sometimes we start to talk about prayer and the natural inclination is to go, Ugh. like that's prayer's hard, like I've tried that. Um, but most of us, I would think in here, would say that um, we know that it's important. We know it's an area we should grow in. And so I just challenge us all to just really have our hearts and our minds and our ears open to something that we can take away today um, that would just cause us to grow in that more intimate relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to start. I mean, we're talking about prayer. So I think uh, a good place to start is, is uh, what, I'd love to hear from each of you or whoever wants to jump in here. Um, what is, just share a, a brief story of answered prayer that just stands out to you in your mind. Who, whoever wants to jump in. <laughs> I'll start. Hear me okay? All right. Hey, uh, I've had a, a lot of amazing answered prayers over the years. Of course, it's been over a lot of years. Uh, the one I'd like to bring up today is the most recent one, uh, just last month. Uh, my Most of my kids, I had five kids, four of them and all their kids, we were all gathering for the 4th of July last month. And uh, got a text, my two-year-old grandson got his finger in a door, and his dad said it's broke. And so they, they rush him to the uh, emergency care, whatever you call that, the urgent care, and the doctor says, it's broke, take him to the emergency room. So we get a text, my two-year-old grandson has got a broken finger, and I'm just deeply hurting for my grandson. So we prayed. Of course, we all prayed, but I was just deeply moved. This was my two-year-old grandson. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while we were praying, I just felt the Lord just kind of whispered into my heart that it's not broke. So I stopped, said, okay. So I said something to those around me, and I don't think it's broke. I think the Lord said it's not broke. And a little bit later, they sent a text saying, huh, wasn't broke. <laughs> just needed a couple of stitches. So I, what an answered prayer just last month. <laughs> That's fine. I'll go since I'm next in line. So <laughs> I could tell you um, the 40-year-old um, hot dog story that was sent from heaven. <laughs> Um, I can, um, Grady says thank you. Um, um, I can tell you about 15 years ago when we decided to make a change in ministry and we went from having a check on Grady's desk every Sunday morning 
to relying on God, speak into people's hearts, to supply all of our livelihood and our missions money. But I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you a story about three years ago. Um, it's a more recent story, and that was when Grady was diagnosed with um, the most aggressive pr prostate cancer that you can have. And, uh, you know, that'll rock your boat a little bit. Mm. And uh, I knew that I needed peace. That, that's the first thing I knew I needed. And um, after the intense shock of that news, I went on a walk. And sometimes when I walk, I take a stick with me just in case there's an aggressive dog or whatever reason, <laughs> I might need a stick. I don't know, always be prepared, right? Um, so I began talking to my Heavenly Father uh, about the situation, praying, having a conversation with him. And I told him I was kind of mad about the whole situation. And uh, actually I was uh, just not very happy and downright mad. I was so mad that I took that stick and I hit a couple of trees and bushes in my neighborhood as I walked. <laughs> I just felt like I needed to get that out somehow, <laughs> besides just speaking to my, my Heavenly Father. And uh, after I calmed my emotions down a little bit, I just prayed, Lord, I need your peace in this. And uh, I knew also I was going to need a lot of patience. And um, several weeks before that, um, I mean, several, we knew it was going to be several weeks before we could go and meet with oncologists about it. Several weeks. And in fact, with the date we had to go meet with oncologists, it was pushed back even further. So the patient's process had begun. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a get her done kind of girl. Give me something to do, I'll get her done. Um, and guess what? Couldn't do it. There was nothing in my flesh that could profit anything. And so I waited and asked for peace and patience. Um, you know, God is always faithful to hear our prayers. And God is also in the waiting. We don't like the waiting. We hate the waiting, don't we? Everybody hate waiting? Everybody <laughs> hates waiting. But God is in the waiting. And he will speak to us in the waiting, and he did. So I found a scripture, and it said in Psalms 27, who I would have been despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes, again, wait for the Lord. Mm. So I waited. And then another scripture came to my mind about from Psalms 25. Uh, you know, it's to thee, O Lord, I lift my soul. Oh my God, I put my trust in thee. Uh, became my prayer, verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. For thee I wait all the day. And those days can be long when we're waiting to hear something. God is in the waiting. We are learning patience. A peace process began when he was answering my prayer. A ministry friend of ours said to me, Sandy, you know what? And she went through cancer. She said, um, God's numbers are not superseded by the doctor's numbers. Wow. You know what verse that's based on? That's first, uh, based on a verse that says, um, thine eyes have seen my unformed substance and thy and in your book, they were all written, the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. There, there it was, the higher truth. Peace could begin to come. God was answering my prayer because Grady's days had all been numbered. So the doctor's number doesn't change God's number. Isn't that great news? Mm -hmm. And that was just an answer to my prayer. Peace began to come. God gave me other scriptures and thoughts during that time. And guess what? Three years now. We've been walking in peace and patience, mm. and we're still doing it day by day. Mm, that's really good. As I was thinking about this question, uh, a lot of times we desire to hear a specific answer, like, here's what I'm praying for, what is the exact answer, and then I'll know what to do. And when I graduated in 2008 from Colorado State, I had three potential directions that I thought I would the one I really wanted was, you know, like any college graduate, what would make the most money? And that was with the uh, Union Pacific Railroad. I love to travel. I thought, I'll go travel, make this money, then sometime I can settle down. So that was option one. Option two was I was working as an intern at uh, the city of Fort Collins engineering department. And so I thought, you know, that's a backup. I already work there. So 
I should have some sort of in. And then the third option was to go to grad school here in Lincoln at the university. So that was like the, the backup, backup plan. And my advisor was like, oh, you'll get the uh, Union Pacific job. And then everyone that I was working with at Fort Collins was like, oh, you're, you'll for sure get the job. Well, never got the first job, didn't get the second job. And then I had like just a couple days to accept a teaching or a research assistant at UNL was like, well, I prayed for clear direction and the only door that looks to be open <laughs> is to come to Lincoln. So as I was thinking about the question, I just thought sometimes we desire to have specific answers and sometimes the door is just open and we just need to take the door that's in front of us. And so that's, that was the story that came to my mind. Hmm. That's really good. That's good. Um, so when, uh, so before we, so earlier this week, I, I emailed everybody and said, hey, sh share, what, is, what are your passions in prayer? And what was really cool, there was like this, this common thread uh, through, uh, through all three of their answers, and it, it all went back to this, this quiet time, this, this daily, regular quiet time. It kept referring back to that. And so I want to I wanna ask you guys, maybe, um, you know, we talk about that on Sunday morning. I, I, I reference that, or, or whoever's preaching references our, our quiet time to the Lord. Um, but, but I never want to assume anything. So um, there's a lot of us who maybe haven't started into some kind of consistent quiet time like that, or, or you don't even necessarily know wh what that would look like. Um, so I, I would love for each of you to kind of just give a, a short, like, brief, like, what, what does your quiet time look like? Is it pretty much the same every, every day or on a regular basis? Is it drastically different? What, what, are, what are the parameters of, of what your quiet time um, looks like? Uh, my quiet time always starts with a time of thanksgiving and worship, uh, quietly singing in the spirit and in my understanding and, and just listening through that. And I, and I spend time reading in the Word and praying in the Word. And then after a while, I just take time to listen. And listening is where I've, I've heard direction from the Lord. Uh, some of the challenges that I've, uh, that I've been challenged with, I guess. One morning he says, get ready to go to Mexico. Another morning he says, grab some guys and go to the Sturgis rally. And it's just, you know, really, really fun challenges that, uh, but that's where I would hear that leading to do those type of things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, mine can look different at times. Sometimes I'll do, like, word studies. Sometimes I'll just go verse by verse through the Bible. But usually, kind of like Greg is uh, maybe some time of worship and then reading Bible and then, and then praying. Sometimes I'll just read a verse and just kind of meditate on that and uh, one thing that kind of the Lord uh, just had convicted me about last year was just getting some discipline in my prayer I mean there's so many needs out there and sometimes you just need to write it down and so I just kind of put like Mondays family Tuesdays you know friends Wednesday uh, co-workers and just kind of laid out a week so that way if it was Tuesday morning, Is like, hmm, what should I pray about? Then I kind of had that list to go back and say, okay, Tuesday is praying for my coworkers. Hmm. That's really good. Good. I love, I love hearing that. I think it is, uh, it is a discipline. It's such an interesting phenomenon because it is just conversations with Jesus. But if we're not disciplined to make it happen, then your mind does tend to wander or, or if you're not disciplined to have that specific time you know, you get through the end of your day and go, oh, I didn't do that, you know. So it is a, a weird balance of discipline to just uh, sit and spend time with Jesus. But I wanted to hear from you guys. What would you say, uh, this is kind of, I'm combining two questions here, but what would you say, what aspects of your prayer life or moments in prayer bring you the most joy? 
Um, and at the same time, what are some obstacles that you do or have had to overcome in order to be able to enjoy those moments? Whoever wants to go first. I'll start. Uh, I would say praying for others is a real joy for me. Um, I just love to do that. Um, also, some passions in my heart are, um, I'm a birth doula, so I love everything pregnancy, birth, and um, labor. So I love praying for women as they're having their babies, and because a lot of times they don't think they can do it, and I know they can do it, and so just supporting them in prayer. And the other thing is just being quiet enough to hear the precious voice of God. Mm. You know, just being quiet enough, because I'm a busy bee, and you know, just to quiet myself that long, um, that's a joy to me. And then also just to be able to hear him even in the loudest place. God spoke to me one time in a very vibrant, vibrant worship and praise service, but I heard his still small voice speaking to me, and it was undeniable, and it really changed my heart on going into a new season of ministry. So, um, and the biggest obstacle is rising early. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like early is such a relative term. <laughs> Greg, when you were working 100 hours a week at LES, what was early? What, what time was that alarm set? I'm just curious. Um, early on in my prayer life, when I started realizing how important prayer was, and I uh, started with a few minutes a day, and that wasn't enough. Turned into two and a half hours a morning before work and of course I had to be work by 6 30. So, uh, <laughs> and get five kids up and out the door. Oh, yeah. No big deal. <laughs> so I was uh, I was up at three every morning. So it is a discipline. It's all relative. Some of us don't have to be at work at 6 30. You don't have to set your alarm for three o'clock in the morning tomorrow. I'm just saying it is relative. But in a different it's a different type of discipline when you say Sandy to moms that are maybe home. Uh, it's a different type of discipline because we don't have a specific time that we have to get up other than when our children are waking us up. And so it is a discipline to either get up on our own or find the other time during the day or whatever. Or for those of us who are getting up and going out to work, it's a different type of discipline. But yes, we all agree with that. I'd say the same for me is just uh, getting up and then, you know, having just the focus like so many times it's like, I'm, the mind's already started thinking about what needs to get done for the day or, and just being able to, to spend that time in focus and not just go, all right, I checked the box after you know, a half an hour or whatever, and then, hmm, what did I actually read? What did I actually <laughs> pray for? Um, probably the biggest joy, I would say, is just, um, you know, if life is stressed or there's a lot going on, just like hearing that, I am with you, or, you know, it's going to be okay, that just, it's like, okay, even though cr life is crazy, even though things might seem a mess, yeah. there is just that peace of God that comes over you when you quiet your heart. That's good. Let me just say that the, the peace and joy that comes during worship and prayer is, is just so amazing. It's so worth being there, but, uh, Something that surpasses that is when the Lord speaks. And when the Lord uh, just speaks something specific for you today. And uh, as with like each of my grandkids, I got a dozen grandkids, and the Lord gave me a word for every one of them. Most of them when they were born, and a couple of them when they were adopted. But the Lord gave me a real clear word for each of them. That, that, just, I don't think that can be topped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, okay, tangent here. I'm going to follow up a question there. You say, so one of the greatest things when just God gives you that really clear, clear word for the day. Um, would you say that is like a, something that happens to you every single time you go to your, your quiet time? Oh, uh, no. No, it's, it's not that clear uh, <laughs> that often. No. Uh, a lot of times, it's just uh, it, a discipline. It's you, you, you go through. You're doing what you're, you're. You're learning. You're getting ideas and getting thoughts and and stuff. But a, a clear word doesn't come that often. No. 
So what you're saying is we should probably let ourselves off the hook for feeling like we need to walk oh, yeah. away from every yeah, quiet time, true. like with this specific. Don't be convicted because you didn't hear a clear word. No, that's that's exactly right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, okay, so I'm going to ask this next question is the most open ended. So I'm I'm going to let you go with it, go where you want to with it. Um, so if you were to finish the statement, I have committed myself to the discipline of prayer because wide open. What, what if you're just like, why is it that you, you make this commitment to this regular? Because it's, it's not easy. It sacrifices sleep and it, it, it engages, like you're saying, engages your mind early in the morning when you want to be elsewhere. Why do you do it? I would say uh, to grow as a mature Christian. If mm. reading the Bible is nice, but I mean, a lot, of this, a lot of the stories we can easily just say, that was then, but if you truly want to know the Father, if you want to know not only your own, his own desire for you, but also for others, um, that is why I discipline myself. I remember maybe five, six months ago before all the COVID stuff had happened, and I was just praying. I think it might have been one of the days for my coworkers, and the Lord just said, you need to pray for Corey, and so I just was like, something's going on with Corey, and uh, got to work. He came into the break room. I was like, hey, how's it going? And you could just see he was physically, emotionally distraught, and he kind of shared some stuff that was going on with his kids. And so right there in the break room at 7.30, was able to pray for him. So just not only it's easy to pray for ourselves, but just also having that opportunity to live our faith to show others what that's hmm. like. That's good. And to really be just to maybe follow up with Nate, just to really be bold enough. If somebody has a prayer need, you know, a lot of times we'll just say, well, I'll pray for you. You know, be bold. Be, um, be bold in the strength of the Lord and just say, hey, can I pray for you right now? All the times I've worked at the Crisis Pregnancy Center with every person you could imagine in the city of Lincoln, every woman, and only one time did I ever have somebody tell me that I couldn't pray for them. Only one time. And so offer, you know, and if they don't want to, they got to be the bold one to say no. <laughs> so you just, you know, really walk out there. I, I just want to encourage that. Um, the other thing uh, for me is it enables me in my relationship with God, helps me set an atmosphere in myself to be able to walk in the spirit, um, to produce the fruit of the spirit, um, and to love others. And um, on a daily basis, taking the old man off, and putting on the new man. So scriptures in Ephesians and Colossians and Galatians that all talk about those things. And uh, God doesn't let me have a very long chain. And what I mean by that is um, he will correct me. He doesn't let me get too far away from something before he'll say, okay, let's talk about this, sweetie. You know, and uh, one particular time, um, I remember uh, I told a good friend a lie. <laughs> and it wasn't a purposeful lie, and, um, but it was something that I misunderstood, and I kind of didn't correct it right then. And the one time in prayer, God said, you know that thing? Fix it. Well, so I'm a 40-year-old pastor's wife, worship leader, mature, mature Christian. Uh, Thanks, Robin. <laughs> and, and God is saying, fix it. So what are you going to do? I went to her and confessed, and she said, oh, didn't remember it, wasn't a big deal. But the obedience was the thing, and God spoke that to me in prayer. And uh, remember that we trust him because he's trustworthy. Mm. We trust God because he's trustworthy. Mm. And so I say, okay, you've got my life, God, do it. Just a shorter answer from me. I know he hears me. Because of the answer prayers I've seen, and uh, I've seen lives change, especially mine. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, I just want to, uh, I just want to come back to what you said, Sandy. Too is that we do trust him because he's trustworthy. But I know what it feels like when an outsider gives you an opinion about what you're doing. Right? Somebody you don't know very well, somebody who doesn't know your heart, says, "Hey, you should do this differently." 
And, you know, we all kind of bristle at that, kind of like, you don't even know me. Like, why would you? Uh, that's hard for me to even hear. But as you spend that daily time with the Lord, as you get to know the Father's heart, it's in those times that he can give you those um, that areas that you, he wants you to fix or he wants you to work on, but he does it in such a loving way and it's, it's easier to receive it. So I guess I just wanted to encourage anybody who's out there who's like, oh, I don't, wanna, I don't need to sit down and have somebody tell me what I need to fix and what I need to do right. Just spend time with them. Just learn his heart, get to know his heart, and then he will lovingly show you. And it's, it's a little easier to hear it in those situations, wouldn't you say? All right. Um, so... I would imagine, like, based on where you guys are at right now in, in your prayer life and, and, and just that closeness to the Lord in those times, um, I would imagine that it, it probably, and, and Greg, you referenced this earlier, it probably didn't start the way it looks today. So um, how, how did you begin? What, what was that kind of process uh, about how you first started um, and, and how your prayer life has developed to where you're at right now? It was uh, about 40 years ago when I first attended a charismatic church. And that's when I started to realize how important prayer was. And so I thought, well, I got to try this, you know, a little bit more than the, the, the bedtime and meal prayers that I had before that, you know. And, and uh, so I started off, okay, I committed to five minutes of worship and five minutes in the word and uh, five minutes of listening. I don't know, I heard somebody say that's what you should do. And so I tried that and a few days later that wasn't enough. And a few days later that wasn't enough. And it, it just kept growing because the, the, just the, uh, the heartfelt time with God was so awesome that it just kept growing until it was two and a half hours in the morning. I couldn't get enough. Uh, although, since then, I probably uh, backed off to maybe a couple hours a day. <laughs> but, of course, now I'm not working, so it's a little easier. <laughs> um, I became um, pretty serious about prayer in November of 1995. Uh, when my younger brother Tim and his wife um, delivered a baby that had uh, a lot of medical issues and his name was Braxton and he was born with just some major things wrong. Um, first they saw it was just a cleft palate and then they found more issues of um, extreme problems with his heart and that he was blind. And so you get that kind of news that nobody was expecting at all. And uh, I began to call out to God in prayer and for my brother, who I'm the closest to in age of all my siblings. And uh, I also fasted for the very first time in my life then and uh, was just praying for him. And he had many ups and downs and he lived to be 18 months old. And then my brother uh, held him as he died in his arms. And uh, very difficult situation, very difficult time. But uh, he only left the hospital a few days in those whole 18 months. But God was doing many things during that 18 months for that, for that baby, for his parents, for our family, and for me. And uh, for me, that's when um, he taught me how to pray and how to really intercede in prayer for my little nephew's life. And um, he was healed. He's going to be amazing when I get to meet him in heaven someday. But you know what? Even through hard things, God um, lets us learn and he teaches us. And so um, the last part of that question, does it look the same now? No, it's, it's really increased also for me. Even a couple of times uh, I fasted for 40 days. And when I look back and think about that, I'm thinking like, I did what? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, God just enables you to do the things that he calls you to do. So you'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When I first started kind of really, I would say, hearing from the Lord, I would always go for like a prayer walk. So just it, it seemed easy for me to get outside, usually at night or in the early morning, and just like 
nothing going on, you know, I can't get distracted. And so that's when I really first started hearing from the Lord. And then I kind of just believed that I could only hear from the Lord when I went on a walk. And as I've matured a little bit, I don't go on those walks necessarily as much anymore, even though I still do enjoy that. But I began to just mature and say, oh, I can hear him in the kitchen. I can hear him in the prayer closet. I can hear him at work. Like, but so it is definitely different, but I would say for me just having a, a place like you mentioned, Beth, the prayer room where that was the purpose and just having that purpose, like if you're in the living room on the couch, it's easy in front of the TV to, oh, what's the Rocky score? Or <laughs> to, to wake up 20 minutes later, but to have a place where that is what you do there. I know for me in the prayer room, I heard the Lord a lot because that was the whole purpose and the, the prayer walks, that was the whole purpose. And mm. so uh, just finding those places for me has continued to change. Mm-hmm. And I want to jump in there because I would say that um, the place doesn't have to be a place that you don't do anything else there, right? So right. maybe you're like, well, I'm not going to build a prayer room in my garage, um, I know that's uh, kind of a big deal for you. You've had a spot. Now your spot is kind of changing because you go outside too, but like, you want to speak to that? Yeah, I, I would say uh, pointing back to one of the most, uh, the, the times in my life that I really felt like I grew in my relationship with the Lord and my intimacy with him was when I, when I said, this, I'm going to set the alarm at this specific time. So there was a time and I'm going to sit in this chair and I'm going to listen to a song. I'm going to, you know, I really had to put order to it. And um, the, to me, that is, I still look back on those, those days as some of the sweetest times with the Lord. And it was, it's a rocking chair in the middle of the living room at a time of day nobody else is in there. Um, but, but the place is really important. This, now it's changed, and I, any, any chance I get to sit on the front porch, that's where it is now. And it's amazing. Like, I actually, like, have neighbors that come in and out of their house that I see now. I never used to see them before. <laughs> like, I'm waving at neighbors more often. You know, I'm building relationships, too. So it's... Anyway, but yes, I would agree, like, uh, that same spot, just, it just provides just that little bit of, of peace, you know, one, it takes one question out of the equation, one thing to think about, and you just know that's the spot. Uh, what would you say if you could give one tip, and that's a good, a great one, Nate, but if you could give one tip to somebody out here who is just really trying to establish this consistent quiet time with the Lord, what's one tip that you would, you would give them? I'm going to jump in here first because I passed on one so I could get two tips. (laughs) That's right. I'm a little sneaky sometimes. Uh, Remember, I love this. I love this question. Remember, it's about a relationship and a conversation with God. Okay, that's what it's about. You're having a conversation with God. And uh, we read and studied a book several years ago called Your Personality and Your Spiritual Life. Not that I want to sell books. Reginald Johnson, it's a great book. I'll have it here if you want to just look at it. Everybody prays different. You know that by your personality type, something feels more natural or, you know, Grady and I pray real different than each other. And so there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So that's awesome. So first of all, just take that off the table. Um, You know, God will grow you and you'll, you know, you'll probably end up enjoying things more if you kind of go where your natural tendency is. So that's one thing. Um, During the early years when I was raising six kids, um, it was one verse, one thought, one, um, one, you know, prayer at a time, just, you know, just even to get through the diapers in the day, you know, that's where I was at that point. And again, no condemnation, do that, start at that place. Um, but I've really enjoyed using and sharing my big book here and I didn't bring it out because, um, it's big, but I want to show it to you anyway. Um, it's called, um, whoops, it's called prayer portions. And this is like 365 pages of prayer, um, places that you can start in prayer. It's like a jumping board, a springboard, prayers from everything from marriage, family, um, warfare. I mean, a certain issue you're going through, it's just been invaluable to me. And I realize now that I've had that for 25 years, that I've been kind of working and sharing that book with other people. Um, Pray the word. Just like your parents, you know, teach children to talk, God has given us his word, and he loves us to say it back to him, right? Any mamas know that when you've taught a child how to 
how to say those words. You know, you just say it to them, they say it back. And you're just so, like, overjoyed. Mm -hmm. I think our Heavenly Father's like that. He likes to hear his words spoken back to him. Um, and many times I sing my prayers, just like King David. I don't, if somebody asked me to pray right now, I wouldn't break into a song. But um, <laughs> I can control myself. <laughs> But in my, um, my private time, I will usually begin with a prayer, um, a, a song. Um, and uh, just start to do that. The last thing is that um, I have what, something that I call my morning song. And Grady's cousin encouraged me with this when um, he was diagnosed with cancer three years ago. Before I get out of bed, I just pause for a minute and see if there's a song in my heart. It's a great exercise. And then that's a song that you can begin your quiet time with, hmm. your prayer time with. More often than not, there's a song. Now, don't go to bed listening to bad songs, or songs <laughs> that aren't going to be uplifting. You know, surround yourself with good worship music is, is the key. And if you have little kids, you know, you might be singing, uh, you know, the Mary Had a Little Lamb. But um, a lot of times God will put a song in my heart during the night. And even sometimes it's even on my lips. And so I just began uh, with that um, prayer. So anyway, I'll stop there. <laughs> but no one's counting. It's okay. Greg, did you have one tip that you would, or Renee? I would uh, just want to add a little bit. Uh, Hebrews twelve eleven. Uh, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant but later yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it. So now the context is more about God's teaching us, but I, I'm confident that it uh, really works for us too. At first it might, be, might seem like a discipline, and you got to just set your alarm and uh, just do it. But there's going to be so many rewards from it that uh, you'll find it well worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think just to tag on to that, just perseverance. Just uh, like we talked about earlier, if you're expecting to hear a clear direction for every single day, you might <laughs> have some unmet expectations, but just to continue to persevere and uh, the Lord will speak to you, but persevere through when it doesn't seem like he is. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I read a, a quote just this week, um, actually in, in that prayer by Foster book I was reading, um, but it just said, habit overcomes habit. And I thought that just, I mean, it makes sense, but it's so simple, but it's so true. Um, I think some of the, the bad habits that steal us away from that quiet time I think there's, a, there's an element, for, again, I'm, sometimes I'm just real simple, and th that is all I need, like, oh yeah, I do that habitually, but if, if I see where I want my life to go, I just got to choose to build other habits, and it takes a long time to build habits, uh, but if you persevere, uh, one day you'll look up and go, oh, I'm praying without the effort, because I've built this habit into my life. Um, and uh, anyway, I, I just think that's good. And Go I ahead. love that, and I think we've heard it from everybody individually in different ways, but I love that it has turned into, into joy, right? I didn't mm -hmm. hear anybody talk about how, I mean, it is still, we still have to get up early, right? So there is some discipline there, but I just love hearing from everybody that personal experience, people we know that would say, well, it does get to the point where, yeah, it isn't, it isn't discipline, it's a joy, if I miss that time, I'm really sad. I'm sad that I miss that time with the Lord. I think a lot of, I know I've used this illustration before, but when I think of spiritual disciplines in any capacity, but especially for prayer, um, I think of like little kids, right? Like who don't want to bathe or brush their teeth, <laughs> right? But, but now those of us who have matured, like it doesn't feel so good that fresh after the toothbrush feeling, right? Your mouth just feels that. It's a great, wonderful feeling, right? As a kid, nah, I don't want to brush my teeth. But now we've learned to appreciate that discipline. And now we can actually feel the joy of it. Uh, taking showers. That's, that's, it's wonderful for me and everyone around me. <laughs> Honestly, prayer is the same way. It's wonderful for me and it's wonderful for everybody around me because it puts me in, that, in, in the mind of Christ. Um, but as a little kid, you don't want to. 
It's inconvenient. I have to stop playing or doing whatever I wanted to do in order to do this. But now, after a hard day's work, you go hop in the shower, and there's nothing more refreshing feeling. Um, and I believe prayer is, is along those same lines where um, it's a discipline early on, but, but there's just a joy and, and a delight that happens. Can I just add one quick thing? Do it. If you're not an early person, we've all said early, early, early. You don't have to get up early. It doesn't say in the Bible, thou shalt pray in the morning. I know as we focused this month on prayer, there's been some mornings where I haven't got up early, and I'll go over to the parking lot of Christ Place Church and eat lunch and read and pray, or sometimes it might be at night. So if you're not a morning person, don't feel like you have to get up. <laughs> Find a time that does work and set that aside. That's good. Um, all right, last question. So this is your last chance. All right, you got to get all your words in right here. Um, but let's say there, there's some in here who, one, are, um, I mean, across the board, right? I would imagine there's going to be some who have active prayer lives that are amazing. There's probably some of us who are in here who feel like maybe their prayer life is struggling and maybe kind of want to but hasn't got it to click. There's probably another group in here that's like, well, I've tried that. Um, if you were to give like, a, like a, a two-minute closing argument that you're trying to turn everybody into these prayers, right? Go out and pray today. You got one last shot. What would you say? You say, man, this, this is the reason. This is the most compelling thing that I've got. You need to be a prayer as well. I think I'm going to start. Um, Luke 11, 1 to 13 references one of the disciples asking Jesus, to teach us to pray. And the disciples had Jesus right there with them. All the more we need to learn to pray. And uh, we need to learn to tune into that God frequency, I, I kind of say. Um, he wants to hear your voice. Um, he wants to spend time with you. And he wants to speak back to you. Mm. He does that in, in other ways besides hearing it audibly or in our heart. He does it through his word. And it will never, never, never be wasted time. It's never going to be time wasted. Um, as in some of our other daily activities that might be wasting our time. So uh, even if you don't hear something every time you pray, you've been obedient. And you've spent time with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And your Heavenly Father. And you are his treasured possession and the apple of his eye. And he loves to spend time with his kids. That's good. And that's you. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite verses is Isaiah 33, 6. And it says, He will be the stability of your times, abundant in salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. I think some other versions that I've read have said he's a rich storehouse. So, I mean, you think of the biggest... Costco, the biggest Sam's Club, <laughs> and you're seeking salvation, wisdom, and knowledge, when you pray, that is what you're entering into, is that rich storehouse mm -hmm. of wisdom, salvation, and knowledge. And in the beginning of that, it says, he will be the stability for your times. And if right now you think you need some stability, that's what you can enter into. Mm, that's good. An old story just came to my mind. I hope I can remember it. <laughs> Getting a basket of water. A young child went to his grandfather's house where they burned coal for heat. So they, they carry the coal in with a basket. And a basket was really dirty. And the granddaughter said, the basket. Dirty. What do you do with that? You know, it was, she was complaining about the dirty basket. She says, well, go get a basket of water. So she runs down to the creek and gets a basket of water. Of course, it's all gone by the time she gets to the house. So the next day, she gets up. Grandpa says, go get a basket of water. So every day, she goes and gets a basket of water. And after a while, he says, look at the basket. It's clean. 
you go get a basket of water every day and you get clean. The basket gets clean. Mm -hmm. So it's like every day. You don't even notice the difference day after day. But you look back a few weeks or a few months or a few years and you're clean. Mm -hmm. You're different. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, Greg, Sandy, Nate, thank you guys so much for coming and just sharing your lives and experience and, and what God has done um, with you and in you and, and through you. Um, I, I want to take just the last minute here as we wrap up our time together uh, to just all of us, to, to just take a, a moment in prayer. I'm going to ask Terry um, if she can come to the, the keys. But we're just going to take a moment and we're just, we're just going to We're just going to pray. Um, and uh, before we're dismissed here, because we can talk about prayer all day long. I love it when, when uh, Dick Duncan was here a couple weeks ago. He just, I'm a practitioner. Uh, we all need to be practitioners. We can, we can be students of prayer, but if we never practice prayer, who cares? Um, and so we're just going to take just a moment. And, uh, and so my prayer for, for each and every one of us is going to be simply this, is that we would grow in our prayer lives. Uh, that we would grow in, in our, our, our time with the Lord. Because we gather on Sunday mornings to learn about God. Um, we gather on Sunday mornings to know his word, to worship him. But God desires to meet with you every single day of your life. And God desires to speak into you every single day of your life. And so I'm just going to pray that right now that, that God would, would begin to work in us uh, the courage to engage in this discipline of prayer. And, um, and I'm going to trust that as we do, we each one of us in our homes or workplaces, wherever we're at, we'd be able to see the answers of prayer um, to what God is doing. So, so can, we, can we just bow our heads and our hearts here for a moment as we wrap up today, together today? Um, and let's just, let's just look to God today. Father, we praise you and we thank you for your desire to be with us your desire to speak to us, your desire to, and, and, and the way that you've made to engage. God, you are the God of the heavens. You are the, the God of the universe, the all-powerful, uh, omnipresent God that we love and honor. And, 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 and in all your vastness and holiness and goodness, you make yourself personally available to us. God, may we not miss another opportunity. Father, may we not leave with guilt or, or, or condemnation, but Father, with, with hopeful anticipation of being able to meet with you tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Father, I pray for my friends who are here today who, who, who have wrestled through this, who, who've tried to establish something but, 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 but maybe fail to meet the own expectations that they've placed in their head. God, may we remember as we, we strive to, to, to pursue you, your, your heart, your, your mind, um, to know you, to be with you, God, that a moment is not wasted. So God, we come, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna put all our, our, our cards on the table here, Father. Uh, we come completely inferior to be able to do this right, whatever that means. And we, would you take our humble attempts at drawing near to you? W would you take our, 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 our small efforts Sometimes our immature um, attempts to get your attention. Would you be gracious with us and show yourself to us? May we hear your voice today. May we hear your voice this week. Because God, you have so much more for us. And it doesn't just come from church services. It comes from you. So God, we praise you and we thank you for this mystery, this mystery of the God of the universe made personally accessible. So Father, we praise you and we look forward in hopeful and excited anticipation of meeting with you, of knowing you this week. 
God, we love you. It's your name we pray. And everybody say, amen.